Another one, which um, you sent me a picture of, uh, uh, saying kind of that you didn't mm. like it, that I randomly put on Instagram, just messing around. I saw that. Yeah, uh, inversion tables yes. or... or um, Distraction. Yeah, I guess technically you're trying to distract the spine or decompress yeah. the spine like by hanging, hanging upside, hanging upside down. Hanging upside down. self-made sex swing in yeah. the gym by a large band. Yeah, so hanging upside down, sure. because of gravity, my spine has crushed itself, so now I'm gonna hang upside down so my spine doesn't crush itself anymore. Again, the body is of no obligation to make sense to you. So I think just like the breaking up tissue, it gives like it gives people mental clarity. Like, oh, I get it now. Yeah. The wait, we compressed our spine with weight on our back when we squat. We'll decompress it, and things will be good, sure. right? Yeah. It's. I mean, people like dualistic. I mean, we kind of live in a dualistic universe, right? Up has down, left yep. has right, black has white, yep. up has cold. Um, but with the compression of the lower back is not meant to move. Right? It's built in a way where our hips are mobile, low back stays stable, right? Core stabilization. Yeah. Um, so of that stability of the lower back, of the lumbar spine, we need to look at structure and function, right? Where muscles play a role in the functional stability yeah. of the lower back. And You're then, not kicking a soccer ball with your fucking No, that pelvis. would be incredible if you could do that. Yeah. But so muscles play a role in function and then you have uh, annulus fibrosis. So your your lumbar discs ba basically break up into two subsections of your annulus fibrosis and your nucleus propulsus. That's like the fluidy stuff that ends up. Or cushions. Yeah. Cushions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then you have ligaments. There's massive network of ligaments between the bones that, that connect like the pelvis into the into the lower back. Um, joint capsules, like little facet joints that keep vertebra aligned with adjacent vertebra in the lower back. Now, there is going to be that stretch reflex on the muscles that feel tight. That's what you're feeling. These muscles are of an interesting nature because they're not neurologically wired like the rest of our muscles are. They're reactive to their position, but we can't contract them. Like when guys get low back pumps, yeah, yeah. they couldn't really do an exercise. So you can't flex it like your bicep. Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. not under conscious control. Yeah. It's all relative position. Kind of an internal safety mechanism so one bone doesn't move too far to the other. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. in the midst of these bones is a spinal cord that's kind of important. Is this psoas and QL and all weird things like that? What? These muscles you're talking no, about? No, these are like transversospinalis. Multifidus is the common one you'll hear. Rotatories, uh, intertransversarii. Throw more of these out because in, in three months, I'm gonna get more messages that they're Montella or Serii. Yeah, uh, no, so they're just like, uh, they're muscles that basically control relative position of the vertebra in all three planes of movement. Okay. Okay. So if they're tight, they're tight because some they're reacting and having to move or resist movement in an eccentric load. So. Yeah, the people are right. If it feels, and that's kind of the hardwired thought process. Yeah. If something feels tight, I'm going to stretch it, right? So if it feels yeah, or pound on it, I put more pound yeah. on it, right? So the the banded distraction, what it does, it, yeah, it, in the shortest term, it'll have an effect on <clears throat> the neurological perception of that muscle of feeling tight. But when you're hanging from the squat rack for 20 minutes, after that initial transient release of the muscle. Now we're getting into actual plastic deformity, which is like your muscle has an elastic property to it. You can kind of shut it, shut it down and it'll come back to more or less the same length over time, whatever. But the discs and the joint capsules and the ligaments, these are things that we can't regain their elasticity, regain the tension. So you end up kind of in this vicious cycle where your low back is tight for any number of reasons. You have poor hip mobility, you yeah, have yeah. anterior pelvic tilt. Your shit posture, your shit fat, po your yeah. fat. Yeah. and that's the ones I see. It's yeah. always the fat guys yeah. who are hanging upside down. So instead of fix all, I that, hung upside down last weekend. That's um, so what happens is they they release the muscle, but in doing so, they actually they degrade some of that structural stability that's also a contributing factor. Now we got to think stability is a value of 100. Yeah. In regardless, shoulder, hip, knee, whatever, and it's at what position we're getting contributions from function and what positions we're getting contribution from structure, right? Between those two, they need to equal 100%. Otherwise, you're going to end up with damage, pathology, yeah. breaks, disc herniations, whatever. So if we're diminishing the function's ability to contribute to that stability, or sorry, the structure stability, or structure's ability to contribute to that stability, then the muscles need to work that much harder. So if we're you know adding length over time to these ligaments and um, tendons and discs and uh, joint capsules, then the muscle is going to reflexively have to take on more of the load over time. So and that's where weird imbalances and knots weird imbalances, and who knows or just you have to you feel like to just be normal. You have to hang yourself upside down every day. Yeah, so yeah. Rather, that's what I feel like uh, with general foam rolling. Going back to foam rolling, sure. is all these guys like, oh, I didn't foam roll my legs are so tight. So I was like, well, that's because you foam roll for three hours every single yeah. day. Your body's used to that stimulus, yeah. and so you don't feel normal without it. But if you just do it when you need it, mm. maybe you don't fucking. 
I think just in conjunction, the idea is to always scale, scale stimulus from external to internal. If we can move our, get, change the perception using external stimulus so we can use our body's own internal stimulus yeah. to create that motion, create that motion, create that stability, create that mobility within ourselves. You're talking cues, motor pattern, cues, moving motor correctly. Pattern, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah, moving into more unstable positions. So yeah. by and large, the people that use the inversion tables or low back lumbar distraction yeah. stuff, nah. Your time better spent, I think, elsewhere. Yeah. So long answer to a short question. No, I liked it. Um, we'll just go still a little general here. Uh, I guess along the lines, a little bit of those two, like body tempering. Uh, it's become popular to lay really heavy things on you, um, kind of like just a weighted foam roller. Uh, I like the idea of it because I think I've thrown it on my quad and you're like, oh, that feels good. Like, yeah. like massage. Yeah. Like, sure. What yeah, do I so know it's actually doing? But you look like an idiot. Yeah. So yeah. how do you, how do you, uh, what, when, why, how, uh, and are they going for the same mechanism kind of as the foam roll like you're talking about? Yeah. I mean, to me, it doesn't make sense because again, it's a, a larger population. Like you've been in powerlifting warm up rooms before. Yeah. But uh, without fail, the super heavies get off the squat and they have their super heavier friend put one of these large tempering devices on their lower back. Yeah. So your lower back is an extended curve, it's lordosis, right? Lumbar lordosis. Yeah. So it's basically an extended curve, thoracic spine is a kyphosis, yeah. um, a S, flex S curve. type shape going. Exactly. So when you're face down, and you're applying that pressure, lower, you're actually increasing the extension of the curve. So thinking of why those muscles are getting tight in the first place, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're usually drawn into too much lordosis, tight hips, again, yeah. like we mentioned before, have play a big role. The psoas attaches into right. the, the anterior body. You're tugging so, on it. Exactly, pulling that forward. So why would I want to put something on my lower back that's increasing that extension moment of the lumbar spine? Yeah, yeah. Right? Maybe better allocated to the front of the hip, stretching out the hip flexors. But I mean, there is benefit to that deep pressure stimulus. That's why massage therapists and chiropractors yeah. and active release stuff all exists. Um, but again, it's, you know, you can have the tool, but if you're not applying it in the right place. Um, so I just think, the idea of, oh, if it hurts here, put it there. It's like, there's a difference between a symptom and a cause. It's a different tool. You can't put a wrench on a screw. Exactly. So, yeah, maybe, no, so maybe put that thing on your quad. Yeah. Maybe put it on a hip flexor. Maybe, hammy. maybe just put it on the shelf. And yeah. Move. Yeah. Um, it's, for me, that's a, that's a tough one just because with a, with a foam roller, we can actually create motion on it. Like we can do dynamic foam rolling where under that point pressure of the roller, we can, we can flex and extend the quad, create that internal stimulus that we're trying to scale to, right? That's yeah. going to be what makes a lasting change over time to the function and the structure of the muscles. So not a big fan. And again, a lot of times I see it, it's the, the heavyweight lifters. And it's like, if you put your own body weight on a PVC pipe that didn't have any resistance and you're not going to taco like a, yeah. you know, your mom's foam roller or whatever, I think they would have just the same, if yeah. not more of an actual deep pressure stimulus and give you the, uh, the ability to start moving around on and create that internal stimulus that's actually gonna make a correction. Yeah, and I guess uh, even just logical, you know, that's the only way I can think because I'm no fucking schooled guy. Mm. Uh, but you start to think like, all right, well, like that guy squats six, seven, eight, nine, a thousand pounds. Yeah. Uh, and that stimulus is going on as erectors or whatever's tight anyways. Yeah. Why would less weight than that fix that? Sure. Right, but I mean, that's just logic, right? Yeah. Like if I, I don't have a metaphor in my head, but just doesn't make sense if if you're if it's getting tight like you said it and then you're getting it tighter in the wrong position yeah. overextending yeah uh, and it's less stimulus than you put on your back two or three times a week yeah where are we headed exactly so something that I think is technically illegal in California if kind you're of? a chiropractor oh, you, you can't, can't break it. the skin but I think we can do minor surgeries in Oregon uh, I think this dry needling okay is legal in Oregon. Oh sure, absolutely, yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. No, it's and it's weird, state to state. So and then it's discipline to discipline. Like athletic trainers can dry needle in California. No way. I swear. I'm like half a athletic trainer. I took like really? so many courses. Yeah. Oh well, let's let's grab half a needle. Grab me, yeah, grab me there, some needles. There we go. Uh, so it's um, you may know more, but I'm pretty sure acupuncture, typically Eastern type of medicine, yeah. a little bit longer needle. And their belief is they are digging into energies of the body uh, and, and changing the waves of how our energies mm. are moving. Uh, dry needling, uh, maybe a little shorter, stumpier needle. Looks like me and you. Okay. Uh, and Kevin Durant's the acupuncture needle. Gotcha. And they're actually trying to manipulate some tissue that's been knotted or locked up. Obviously these I are basic. I have to phone a friend on this. Yeah. I'm not something like because that. it is not in my scope of practice, it's not something I pursue. I have friends that do it. In Canada it's, it's accepted and that's oh. one of like the major schools is in Ontario. Uh, I think McMaster University has like the leading medical dry needling acupuncture thing. Yeah. 
Um, can't speak on it too, but it does seem it's to be It's something like this. Yeah, uh, again, I just think it's, so we talked about external and internal stimulus. Yeah. Let's take the external in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. essentially, yeah. I think breaking the skin is gonna have more of an effect on the nervous system yeah. than regular of the hand modalities. So I think the potential or possible like mechanism of correction it's making on, and again, I don't think it's right. a, structural fix I think it's all neurological um, yeah telling your muscle to chill out yeah yeah I think it, it I, I don't know much about it to speak because like the comment section will just fill up yeah that was better that's yeah. all right yeah uh, cool. but I think it's effective I've never had it done oddly enough because it is hard to find practitioners yeah. in California I have a friend in Santa Monica that does some work around the NHL and he'll do it periodically um, depending on what I need it I need it. Yeah. We need your friend. All right. I hear good things. So, so cool. I have yeah. a lot of friends that, um, you know, they do cupping, mm. they do that, oh, they do uh, Graston. Sure. Um, and, and what I've hear from this is athletes, yeah. that their favorite is uh, dry needling. Yeah. They feel it works the best. Uh, yeah. What about uh, something like cupping? Where cupping, um, again, me, I'll bring the dumb term and you can bring sure. good terms, uh, is, uh, is uh, backwards foam rolling, where they're taking fascia of some nature and trying to vacuum it uh, away from my body. Not much experience with it. I don't like flavor the week treatment styles. Yeah. So cupping it's been around. I mean, it's Eastern right. medicine, right? It's yeah. been around forever. Uh, Michael Phelps, right? Michael Phelps, like should have bought if cupping was I know. on. I thought about it myself because yeah. we could buy some cups, some on Amazon. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I just think to me the fact like Michael Phelps should have been able if Cupping was a publicly traded company. Yeah. Michael Phelps should have bought stock in it before yeah. the last Olympics. He's the new Steve Jobs. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I just think um, I, it's been around for so long. There has to be something there. That's kind of, I'm not going to, oh, the research isn't whatever. It's like, it's been so around So is racism, for, all right? Sure. It doesn't make it, doesn't make it right. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm sure heroin's been around a while. It's big, big. Opiates are big. Yeah. Um, so I think there's something to it. But I, I think the correction or it, it comes with exclusion criteria. Is it the right treatment for you? Yeah, yeah. Which is gonna be kind of the overarching thought process of any sort of treatment Probably modality. Probably used a little broader than it should. Recently, yeah. yeah Since yeah, the Olympics yeah. and everyone was on the podium with the with the cupping hickeys yeah. and it was like. Uh, was like Graston, which uh, blading or there's a million terms that are. Instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. Yeah, so people take a, a butter knife and they'll scrape it against a muscle, make yeah. it look all purple. Yeah, uh, I, it's one of those ones where I don't think um, if some is good, more is better, which is a problem with fitness industry in the whole yeah. is the idea of dose dependency. That's, that's a that's an American issue. It's a side effect of yeah. being American. No, right? it 100 percent is. Um, I, I think the fitness industry is driven by America, which a lot of things sure. are, yeah. and it's 100 percent America's number one issue. If I was to run a president, I'd figure out a way to fix it. I don't know it yet. I'd vote for um, it. Yeah, it's me against the Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Uh, what a ballot. The issue is is that if some is good, more is better. Yeah. And so we do that with everything. Mm. Yeah, uh, so again, it's some Eastern medicine. I think so the original term is gua sha, yep. two words. And I first showed up in text, and I might be butchering this, the year 212. Mm. It's been around a while. That is a while. So I think for something to have that kind of staying power, there must be something to it. Yeah. Uh, and I think its efficacy is in the exclusion criteria. Who gets it and for what? Right, because like, say you have it for one of your injuries, and people people form a relationship yeah. with treatment modalities that work. Yeah, that worked here. Yeah, exactly. So it's like if your only tools uh, hammer, everything's a nail. That that old hat. So I think with grass and uh, it has its place. Whether that place is with you for a particular injury is yeah. for someone. And who does that? Sorry. Who oh, my friend. Oh, God. Uh, who does that? Uh, anybody? Who Massage therapist? Uh, honestly, yeah. No. Anybody. So Graston is a company. Oh, right. So, so they, they sort of corner the game on a patent level and you need a certain level yeah, of yeah. Um, certificate or something. Yeah. Like so that. the patent since expired, now the market's blowing up. Now everyone has kind of their, their hand at it. and then no one's stopping you from grabbing yeah, a yeah. butter knife and assaulting yeah, yeah, your, your well, I mean, friend. same with the needle, I guess, per se. Sure. Yes. Um, ART. What is it? Oh. How is it used? Good, bad? You do it? No, nope, uh, you don't do it? Yeah, Who does it? I mean, it's, again, we're, we're getting into the patent realm a little bit, so if the oh, AR, really? ART police are watching, it's local, actually. I, uh, I believe, actually, it's called Maybe that's why I know the term. Here. Yeah, no, it's brand. It's a branded treatment modality, yeah, I guess. See? Pin and stretch. Use it. What? Well, I can't remember. Jamming I, something into something and moving the muscle around. Pin and, yeah, so yeah. they're really, their anatomy is really good. Okay. They're not, the anatomy that they use is really good. I'm not going to speak, speak too broadly yeah, yeah. on it because I don't want the patent police to come yeah. knocking down my door. But, but you do something 
uh, manual uh, yeah, with so your it's finger or your yeah. elbow. So then... I think they're the workaround, so ART being the brand, MRT is people's usual workaround, muscle release technique. Okay. No one has uh, laid claim to that. Yet? As a, uh, yet, right? <laughs> Patent pending. Patent pending. Um, so yeah, it's that's the, the go-to, I think, treatment style for lifters in general because yeah. they are so muscle bound. But again, we got to think the mechanism of correction. I think with whether that be like the dynamic foam rolling we talked about earlier, where maybe it's the movement that's creating 90% of the benefit and the external stimulus that accompanies that, maybe the additional 10%, right? So the ART active is yeah. the operative word, which makes it a little different than just laying on a massage yeah. table yeah. and kind of getting that old thing. So um, I think, the, the again, going back to stimulus, it's the internal stimulus of you moving under that external stimulus, um, that's, I think, makes the difference, but... Different ways, similar result, more hopefully, less. yeah, or, or yeah. particular, right? We're trying to get something to shut off or yeah. something to move better. Exactly. And now you're, it's just like programming. Oh, I got a weak lockout. What do I do? Well, yeah. there's 12 different things we might be able to do, and you pick it apart. And that's the thing. It's like, are you getting your programming from some dude with seven Instagram followers yeah. and did a meet, yeah, or yeah. are you doing someone with experience yeah. and knowledge? So that kind of goes. So all the these tools you use somewhat or think are valid somewhat. Not yeah, all, but yeah, all the yeah. ones we've talked about. Um, what about ice? Ice versus heat? Ooh. Heat and ice? Yeah. Uh, fire and ice? I think, I mean, the Earth, best, wind, and fire? The, wow, what a reference. I think the best research paper of all time, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Okay. Some is too hot, some is too cold, maybe right down some the middle. Don't. So you want warm water? Contrast there. No, oh, oh, contrast. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't want to look. No. I'm going to sell. Yeah. Here's warm. this. Here, just put this on yeah. you. We'll be fine. Um, just stand naked in a room. Yeah. Again, I think it depends on. Uh, not only with so ice and heat being a little different from like a biochemical standpoint um, to deep pressure stimulus I think not only what the injury is but when the injury was I think that makes a big difference um, in more acute phases it goes back and forth um, I mean it, it always depends yeah. but uh, some people prefer ice in the in the acute phase um, some people prefer it in the subacute phase and then it depends on what the injury is um, you know, tendonitis issues, some people for hate, some people, and then it comes down to res responsiveness, right? Yeah. Like a research could say one thing, but that's that's yeah. average statistics across, I mean, you know this from a strength and conditioning from a coaching standpoint, where it's like, if you read research on something, it's like, well, 12 well-trained college A's, yeah. I was like, what is well-trained? Yeah. Because I don't think- It's the, a field hockey team. And yeah, yeah, right, yeah. In, in That's Oregon 17 years somewhere. old. Yeah. yeah, so I think like being able to not just read research, but interpret and extrapolate research out where you see fit. Like, yeah. You could read the Bible and think a guy lived in a whale. Yeah. Or you can interpret stories of the yeah. Bible and draw some sort of morality from that. And I think that's research kind of 101. Ice and heat, uh, I don't think there is a consensus out there because I think uh, Shaq would either be selling ice packs or, or heating pads that's at why one it's point. the icy hots. Exactly. They got the market corner. So I think it's, I mean, it depends. Um, I think both have a benefit if used if used properly. Um, so I guess uh, leading into electro stim, okay. uh, which I guess the main argument in this world would be against ice and heat, mm. um, saying that inflammation's there for a reason. Why are we trying to yeah. ice to get that inflammation yeah. away? Let's electro stim that area, make it flex, bring more inflammation or nutrients yeah. or whatever into the area to flush it out again and kind of re rotate this 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 uh, cycle yeah. rather than let's just ice or heat it. Thoughts? Thoughts on electric stim. I'm always concerned when the people doing the research are the parties selling the product, right? So thinking of a confirmation bias that might exist. Uh, that being said, do I have a stim unit? Yeah. Do I use it? Yeah. And then like you said about the, like when the injury happened, yeah. the acute stages versus the subacute. When do you use which and what setting, which one's the best one? Yeah. Yeah. Up to you. Try yeah. it. Try and figure. Try it. Out. Figure it out. I mean, if pain is a subjective measure and we're looking for subjective improvement, then it's on you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, what about like laser and things on the same nature? Uh, Very similar. Almost more so with the bias being because those are expensive units. Yeah. Normally, you only get that at, at a Cairo or a physical therapist yeah. or a hospital. You're not getting it yourself. We're now electro stim. At least in our world, has been more sure. homemade. Um, as far as the laser goes. Research better, not great. You're never gonna find, uh, everyone would just be on lasers all the time. I yeah. think the prevailing stuff now or the new frontier is like LED. 
So basically, everyone kind of comes at it with a different frequency yeah. or wavelength on that electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, so there's cl different classifications to what I'm aware of. So there's a class one, class two, class three, some or class. And one I think makes three. you grow a third arm. Yeah, and but one is the equivalent of like that pain in the ass kid with the laser pointer yeah, at yeah, the movies. Yeah. So uh, I would just be really wary of, you know, I don't think there's a top end where it could potentially do damage if someone does have a machine like that. Yeah. Hopefully they're more responsible. I don't think that's available to the general public. The lower level stuff, um, you might be getting some snake oil. Yeah. You might, someone might be, just be selling you know, a semi-expensive pen light. And uh, yeah, does it have a place? Sure, I think the science would be stimulates mitochondrial activity. Yeah, a little too much. Uh, <clears throat> efficacy versus effectiveness. Yeah. We That's, can do something right, is it the right thing to do? You just saying uh, uh, everyone would be walking around with lasers uh, yeah. is like my point of view on all this. It's my point of view on supplements. It's my point of view. Everyone on creatine isn't strong. Yeah. Everyone who owns a foam roller still gets fucking injured. Seriously. Uh, I've gone to a chiropractor since eighth grade. I've done as much as I could in the gym. I lift well. You still get beat up. Like Things still going to happen. None of these are end-all be-alls. Yeah. What else we got? A knee torque. We just talked about mm. it for a second, yeah. uh, randomly, yeah. uh, and it got you fired. Was that up. on the list before I brought it up? No, I okay, put it on yeah. The, yeah, um, you brought it up. So, um, a term I use often uh, because, again, we're trying to build a cue to lead to you moving a certain way. Sure. Uh, we talk about torque on the bar uh, on, on a bench where we're trying to get our elbows in the right place, uh, keep our shoulder tight, uh, torque in our hips, yeah. uh, just trying to get our knees and ankles and feet on the ground in the, in the correct way for a sumo pull or a squat yeah. so things track properly. Again, I've mentioned a lot of times when I talk, when I say things, uh, I, you've already mentioned here and other places, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a bridge to what I want you to do. What I'm saying isn't what's happening, right? Yeah. We talk about bending a bar on a bench is sure. the best example. We're not bending a bar. It's me trying to say something for you to think away to get something uh, done. Yeah. Um, but hip torque or knee torque or torque in general is a real thing. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, so knee torque, again, it's, it's the Rosetta Stone. You're trying to cue your words into a particular intent, yeah. right? So you're going... Um, you're trying to just use whatever you're saying. Like I could say banana, and if banana meant you externally rotated yeah. your hips as you went through deep reflection, then cool, fucking banana. It's like training a dog. Exactly. Yeah. More or less. Yeah. I mean, people are no are no different. So you can whatever you're saying is you can say whatever you want, but it's the uh, it's the intent and it's the execution of that intent that really matters. So I guess knee torque is going to be dependent on foot position relative to the hip, right? Yeah. Because so, knee torque is. Um, again, getting those knees to be in the right place, getting tension in that ball joint in our in our hips, yeah. and which in turn hopefully make, uses our glutes, hamstrings, low back, uh, quads uh, in a proper manner. So I think of it this way: like if we wanted to hold something together, and our two options were a nail and a screw, what would you rather yeah. hold something? You'd yeah. use the screw because right? it's got some torque. Exactly that <laughs> helical motion. Where so I think with squatting, a misconception I see is. When the feet are straight forward, most people's structure, their morphology, that will actually create torque at the joint of the knee, which isn't really the goal from an intent standpoint. It's like you said, it's right. hamstrings, glutes, it's to create torque at that ball and socket. Because our hip. knees moving in on our squat isn't because our knee joint is going like this. Yeah. It's because of our hip joint not being tight enough sure. or uh, turned on. Yeah. And so our knees are actually moving in, but the knee joint isn't moving. Yeah. And I think if you have your feet dead forward in a squat, and something I see more in like the CrossFit world than the powerlifting world, if anything, those powerlifters are way too yeah, far yeah. out. And like, it comes down to this idea of, you know, people talk about internal external rotation. It's like, you just have rotation. You have an arc. It's where that arc starts. Like baseball players, we yeah. talked about kind of off camera, where it's like the fact that he has an internal rotation deficiency is also the reason he's probably such a good pitcher because he has so much yeah. external rotation. Yeah, yeah. Obviously trying Mobility, to flexibility, strength is all relative and specific to what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it's going to, at some point, it's going to benefit you, but if you push too far at the yeah. end of the spectrum, it's going to be of a detriment and potentially cause injury. So, the torque thing, it's like you want, my rule of thumb is when you're in the bottom of a squat, is when you want to be generating the most torque, right? Because it's when you're in the most structurally unstable position and the muscles that move us in a helical axis are usually muscles of rotation. Right, rotator cuff. Yeah. Uh, stabilized glute med yeah. is going to externally. Yeah, rotate. those are wrapped wrapped around your butts like this. Yeah, so they work. Yeah. They don't work against gravity. They sort of they align the guide wires so the muscles that do work against gravity yeah. can be in efficient position. Quads, extenders, whatever. Yeah, exactly. So I think for me, I don't want to see toes forward and knees out here because that's torque in the joint of yeah. the knee, not torque at the hip creating muscular tension. So that's for me from knee torque. I mean, obviously torque is something you want to 
load is something you want to generate and create because that's going to help us transfer from that eccentric to concentric but is that transfer happening through function or structure yeah right so i think having a, a you're not position, lifting with your bones and you're not yeah, yeah. don't do that because yeah. you won't be lifting for very long yeah i think uh the, the toes really straight too goes into many arguments but like you see the best uh squatters in the world which yeah. are five foot six uh, Asian, Eastern European sure. uh, squatters with the smallest femurs in the world and their knees have no options to go anywhere. Yeah. So they can go very straight and they yeah. can st squat straight down and they're mobile in their hips and they, they move perfectly. That's not any of us. No, no, it's definitely not. Where can people find you? Website, Instagram? <laughs> yeah, uh, best place to find me nowadays, yeah. www.prescript.com, P-R-E-S-C-R-I-P-T. Yeah. Uh, Instagram, the underscore muscle underscore doc. Um, in person, not really. In person, Boss Barbell Club uh, practice in Mountain View, California. There you go. Um, near San Jose, near San Francisco. If you guys are ever visiting, check it out. Drop it. And uh, he's gonna go work on me. And then we're gonna eat food. And then mm. we're gonna podcast. Where, where can they find the podcast? Oh yeah, shit. I'm too many places. iTunes, uh, iTunes, RX Radio, RX apostrophe D, Radio. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, oh, and YouTube. On and the YouTube. YouTube. Muscle Doc. YouTube. Yeah, that's it. Muscle Doc. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not like I'm just shy of giving out my home address. <laughs> yes, well, might as well. <laughs> Eleven. No, I'm not. My wife would kill me. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right, cool. Here we go.